I think that's part of the the problem is that sexuality, everyone's a lot more aware of it when they're younger. I think part of this is because the LGB part of LGBT is much louder and more vocal. And then the T is almost like a little silent bit on the end. This man and woman have been married for four years. They're in a straight relationship. These two men are gay and have been together for two years. These women are a newlywed lesbian couple. We are being taught in more and more depth about sexuality in ever-progressing ways, whilst gender identity is often not being discussed until years later. Sharon was born with a male body but identifies as female, and Jack is biologically female but lives as a man. Their friend Charlie identifies as neither male or female. Individuals who identify as transgender have a hard time coming out, and as self-awareness grows, isn't it time we change the way we talk about gender? What happened to the T in LGBT? I work for Gendered Intelligence and I'm the communications officer. Gendered Intelligence is an organisation that supports young trans people and their families. And we do this through running a series of youth groups in London, Leeds and Bristol. And we have a broad definition of what trans means. We just take it to mean anyone who feels like their gender identity or their internal sense of gender isn't the same as the gender they were assigned at birth. So that can be people who are non-binary, who don't feel like they are male or female, feel like they're between genders, they're gender fluid, they don't have a gender. There's such a huge range of gender identities out there. I'm Addison, um, I'm a non-binary trans man. Some days I feel more non-binary, some days more trans man. I don't normally tell cis people that I'm a non-binary trans man because they go, what does that mean? So I tend to just stick to trans man or non-binary so that I don't blow their tiny minds. I'm Morgan and my gender identity is at this point a non-binary trans mask demi boy but has definitely been shifted many times. I'm also, I'm getting really close to a point of just refusing to use any words to describe it, just saying like, I'm Morgan and that's my gender and like, it's different from everybody else's. I think I learned about gender identity a lot later than I learned about sexuality. I wasn't able to work out my gender identity until I was 29, but I was probably aware of my sexuality when I was like seven or eight. Schools tend to be quite sort of gender segregated, quite keen on separating people into boys and girls and like a lot of the facilities is sort of separated by gender. I think I face quite a lot of challenges day to day because of how society views gender. Something I get in shops quite a lot is, thank you sir, madam, they'll try both to see if it works and it's like why don't you just not, why don't you just say thank you and things like that get really tiring like if you're just trying to buy a coffee. People have assumptions about gender identity based on what they think are gender cues but often they're misinterpreting those and they get defensive when you correct them as though you're attacking them when actually you're constantly being attacked by systems of binary gender. Oh, public toilets are just like a nightmare. I have to make the decision. If I go into the women's, then A, that makes me feel uncomfortable and dysphoric because I'm not a woman, so I shouldn't be in there. But also I don't want my appearance to be seen as threatening to the women who are in there. But equally, if I'm going into a men's toilet, that's potentially a place of danger and I feel quite threatened. If I'm with um, my male partner or a male friend, I'll often go in with them so I have like a buddy because then I almost feel like I get a bit of legitimacy or I'm less likely to get some hassle if I've got them kind of next to me. It's like, look, I'm OK, I'm with one of you guys. Often it's a case of having in my head a map of all the non-gendered toilets across London. So I end up having to like plan my life around <laughs> whether I can go to the toilet somewhere. and that gets really boring really fast. I don't think there is a great deal of education available in schools about gender identity. Schools are also worried about teaching the children about sexual orientation or about trans people because they're worried about what parents will say, they're worried that they'll end up in the media. I really feel like if little small me had known that those options were there and that being non-binary was a possibility, that. I would have had a totally different life compared to how I have now and I would have been able to transition much earlier and it would have saved me quite a lot of misery and confusion, I think. Oh boy, I would have come out so much sooner if I had any sort of gender awareness. 
I didn't come out as trans all until I was, like I said, until I was 21. And so an expanded gender awareness socially would have helped me a lot. I think there's lots of ways that people can be better informed about gender. I think there's a lot of desire to cling to the binary idea of gender because it's very safe, because you can look at someone and you can sort them into this thing or this thing, pink or blue. The amount of people that I've spoken to when I've spoken to them about kind of being non-binary and being outside of that very simple distinction, they've been like, yeah, it is really restrictive, isn't it? I invite men to not be so fragile about their gender and to like to wear those stockings or that lipstick if they want. And I think cis people can be a bit like, but what will we do if we don't have male and female? And it's like, but actually it's fine because it just means that everyone can be themselves. One thing I say to people is like, just use they for everybody. Make as many of your toilets unisex as possible and just chill out. If you're not sure what someone's gender is, A, it doesn't really matter. And B, if you're not sure how to address them, just ask. It's that simple.